Hey guys, welcome back. For today's video, I am going to be talking about the BH Cosmetics Take Me Back to Brazil 35 Color Press Pigment Palette. I have heard so many great things about this palette that I just wanted to try it out. I always get excited seeing like colorful palettes and doing three looks on them because it's like my chance to show you guys more colorful looks and just step out of my comfort zone and I really did that with this palette so I'm like really excited to review this for you guys today. We're just going to talk about the formulation, the shade range, there will be swatches. I do have one palette comparison that we'll chat about and then of course you guys will see my three looks towards the end. So if you guys are curious about all of that then just continue watching. Alright so I feel like we have a lot to talk about because I don't really review a lot of BH Cosmetics palettes. Not that I don't want to, I definitely do but Colourpop is keeping me busy so I feel like maybe you guys don't really know my opinion on BH but let's start off with some product info first so this is Take Me to Brazil I think there's like um, a volume 2 palette to this but this is 20 US dollars you get 35 press pigments note that they are saying press pigments not eyeshadows to my knowledge I think press pigments can stain your skin if you are using it because it's literally press pigments and I think when it comes to press eyeshadows they have like other ingredients in it with a bit of pigmentation but this is just like the complete pigmentation that way you can get these vibrant colors I think don't take my word on that but that's what I'm assuming so if you do have like fairer skin and you are prone to staining then just keep that in mind that this is considered as a press pigment palette the pans are actually not that big they're actually quite small if you were to get a fluffy brush and dip it in it's just going to fit like the circumference of a blending brush which I don't mind but that is just something to note but you do get three shades down here that are a little bit bigger and I also do want to mention that BH Cosmetics does have 3% cashback with Ebate slash Rakuten, I think that's how you say it. So if you do want to save a little bit more money, you can always um, use Ebate and earn some cashback. If you want to sign up, I do have a referral link. This is not sponsored in any shape or form. I personally do use Ebates with my online shopping and I do leave a referral link in all of my videos if you do want to sign up and get cashback. It's 3%. I know it's not a lot, but I mean, it's better than nothing, right? I thought I would mention that, but let's just go ahead and talk about my thoughts. So let's talk about formulation first because obviously that is the most important. So when I first got this palette, I've already heard really good things about this palette, but honestly, I was still a little bit unsure just because this is a really affordable palette and with brighter colors, it is harder to get right because again, that pressed pigment thing, it's hard to get that pigmentation to really show up. What I noticed with this formulation is that they do work great. They blend out really easily just like any other BH palette that I've used before. They blend out very nicely but what I have noticed is that there is a big difference if you use a primer and if you don't and I think that's with any vibrant colors. I think if you were to use a primer they are going to show up a lot more vibrant um, and if you don't use a primer and you just use concealer then they're gonna be a little bit like lackluster. They're still gonna show up very bright but I think using a base will look beautiful. So you can see my eyeshadows today it's very bright because I did use a base. Um, look one and look two I didn't use a base I just use concealer um, set that down with my powder like I normally do with any other eyeshadows that's what I do with Colourpop with any other brand only sometimes I use a base and that's typically when I do a cut crease so I thought it was good to show you guys a difference between primer and no primer so look one and I feel like look three you can tell a really big difference and if you guys are curious the base that I use is the P Louise eyeshadow base and that works amazing for these kind of brighter eyeshadows I feel like if you don't have a good eyeshadow base then this palette might not be as vibrant as you want it to be. So it is an extra product that you would need to make this palette shine to its full potential. But even if you don't have a primer, I feel like concealer still works well. I do want to say that there is a lot of kickback and fallout with this palette. I don't know if it's because I was using a really heavy hand because in the two looks that I didn't use a primer where I felt like I really needed to build it up, I was just like really going heavy and 
handed to really get that pigmentation on. So there is a lot of kickback with that. As for shade range, I think the shade range is so beautiful and so satisfying. I love the rainbows. You get a wide range of like mattes and metallics. I do think it's a little bit more metallics than mattes and I personally would have preferred more mattes. But I think overall it is a great balance to create any type of eye look. Well, not any type of eye look. I don't really think you can create a natural eye look. I tried for look number two, but that didn't really turn out to be very natural. Also about the little shades on the side, I love how it comes with a matte black in here because a matte black, you can deepen out any eye look and you can transform that eye look to be very, very smoky, which I think that's just very smart of them to place this matte black, as well as this like champagne metallic here. You could place this on top of any matte and transform that matte into a metallic which I think is very smart of them. As for this shadow on the bottom I didn't really get any use out of. Maybe if they would have replaced this with a matte white I think that would have been a really great overall palette but this like mint highlighting shade didn't really make sense to me but these two however are definitely those transformer shades. So the placement and the shade range of this I think is really great. I love the three looks that I did. I think they are honestly all so different from each other and different color stories and I think with a rainbow palette like this the color stories are endless so I really did enjoy this palette and I think for 20 US dollars 35 shades you also get a mirror in here as well I think this palette is really really good the palette comparison that I want to talk about is the James Charles palette so this is the only palette in my collection that is somewhat similar to this where it has a lot of rainbow kind of colors so his palette is $39 and it comes with 39 shades. These palettes are so hard to hold. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <sighs> okay, let's ignore what just happened there. So how can I hold these two? Like this? Okay. So the James Charles palette is almost double in price of the BH Cosmetics one. This one does have four more shades and I do actually like the formulation of Morphe's palette a little bit better, but I do think the shade range in the BH one is a little bit more wider you get a lot more rainbow colors in here for the james charles palette you do get a lot of warm tones so i guess if you wanted a palette that you can create rainbow shades and natural everyday shades then the james charles palette is probably going to be more suitable for you but if you already have enough like warm tones in your collection you don't really need more and you're just looking for a palette that's strictly rainbow then i think the bh1 is worth to pick up you are saving you know 19 dollars and i think with a good base these shadows will be just as vibrant as the Morphe one so I think this is a really good dupe for the James Charles one. I can see myself picking up this palette a lot when I want to be a little bit more creative when I'm creating my cosplay looks. I know this palette is going to come very handy so I'm glad that I have it and I can just go back to it just to get these brighter rainbow colors. So overall it's a big thumbs up for me. I would recommend it to you guys. Okay so that was the review portion done. Now we can move into my three looks. Alright, so for the first look, I'm going to start off with these two yellow shadows and I'm going to pack this on at the inner third of my lid space. I'm going to pack this onto my lids, blend this up towards the crease area, up towards my brow bone. You just want to diffuse this yellow shadow in the inner third of your lid space. I'm then gonna take these two green shadows. One is a matte and one is a metallic. I just like the tones of them together, so I just mixed them and there was no issues with that. But I'm going to place this at the center of my eyes, pretty much doing exactly the same thing, just packing that onto the lid, bending that up towards the brow bone. But I am making sure that I am meshing the green and the yellow together. And now taking these two pink shadows, I'm going to place this at the outer third of my eyes and just repeating the same exact steps. And of course, you want to make sure you are blending the pink in towards the green. It's a lot of back and forth because once you blend, some of the shadow like fades away. So you just go back and forth with your previous brushes. I am cheating a little because I did take a dark brown shadow from a different palette just to line my lash line. Because I knew I wasn't going to wear any falsies for this look, I just needed some definition against my lash line. 
I also took a very light transition shadow just to run this on my lower lash line just to give a slight definition. It's very subtle, you can barely see it. It's quite close to my skin tone, but I just wanted some definition on my lower lash line since I wanted to keep it quite bare with no bright shadows. I do take the highlighting shade from the palette and I use this at the inner third of my lower lashes. This is going to give us a very bright spring baby doll eyelid. Look, I feel like highlighting that area just gives you that like very baby look if that makes any sense and to complete the eye look I took these little gems and I stuck them around my eyes I did the complementary colors so I put a yellow one at the inner corners of my eyes a lime green at the center on my lower lash line and then a light pink at the outer corners and I just feel like it really ties in the eye look it gives the eye look a little bit more glam since everything was quite simple I do wish that the gems were a little bit smaller I do think they're a little bit too big but Either way, it works, and I think it looks pretty cute. And that, you guys, is the first look completed. Although it is a very simple eye look to do, I feel like it still gives you a big statement because of all of the pastel colors, and it does look like you took a lot of time into the look because of the shades. But I do hope you guys enjoyed this first look. It's something very different for me, like no lashes. This technique is something I don't really do often. Pretty much no shadow on the lower lash line is just unheard of. So I did something different for this first look, and I definitely want wanted to create something that was a little bit lighter and more on the pastel side with this palette so hopefully you guys enjoyed this first look. So now onto the second look, I'm gonna start off with this orange matte shadow as my transition shadow. I'm going to work that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions as always. You can see that I am blending this up towards my brow bone and also towards the outer corners of my eyes, dragging it towards more of like a cat eye shape. I also bring the shadow onto my lower lash line as well. I'm then taking the matte red and I'm going to work this at the outer third of my eyes first just to get the most pigmentation there and then I'll bring the rest of the product towards the inner parts of my crease area. I was actually quite surprised how true to red the shadow appears so I am very impressed by the shadow but I am also bringing the shadow onto my lower lash line once again but this time I am using more of a defining brush to press this up against my waterline. I'm just taking a bit of that matte black shadow and I'm going to use this to slightly deepen out the outer corners. I'm only taking a little bit, like I only dip my brush in once and then I am just slowly using this shadow. I think it's really smart of them to put this black shadow because you pretty much can deepen out any eye look. But I also do like to bring the black shadow onto my lower lash line as well, but I'm only going to focus this at the outer third. Now taking this bronze champagne gold shade, I am using this shadow wet. I'm going to place this right at the inner third of my lid space. I'm going to diffuse this out around the crease area so that there are no harsh lines. You can see that I'm also bringing this towards the inner corners of my eyes as well to highlight that area. But now just taking a black look liner, I'm going to use this to line my lash line. And then going back into the matte black shadow, I'm going to use this to smudge out that liquid liner and also create a very dramatic wing. And lastly, I just took a brown pencil eyeliner to tight line my bottom waterline. And this, you guys, completes the second look. I actually envisioned this look to look a little bit more on the natural side. I wanted to give you a look that you could just wear out that wasn't so bright, but because of the red, it is more of like a statement eye look, but I still feel like you can wear it out, like for dinner or a night out, just because it's more in the warm tone family that it's a little bit more wearable, but definitely still a statement. So I feel like it's a good in-between. I really liked how this turned out. I was really impressed with that red. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed enjoyed this second look as well. So we are now on to our final look. I'm gonna start off with this 
sky blue shade and I'm gonna work this as my transition shadow. You can see that this shadow is performing super well because I did use a base. I'm using the P. Louise eyeshadow base and this base really enhances like pressed pigment so that's why it seems a little bit more intense than the first two looks. But yeah, I love the shade. It's super unique. It's so vibrant and bright. I am blending this up towards my brow bone and I'm dragging it out towards the outer corners. I'm pretty much just blowing this shadow all over my lids. I'm then taking this medium teal blue and I'm going to work this at the outer third of my eyes first. Just getting the most pigment there and then I'll pretty much take it towards the inner part of my crease. But honestly, it's just going to go all over my lid space at this point. I just really want this definition in my crease area as well as the outer corner. So you just want to make sure everything is blended. It doesn't really matter too much about placement right now. And then taking the dark navy blue, I am doing exactly the same thing as I did with the medium teal shade. Just working that at the outer third and then bringing it towards the inner corners of my crease. Because it is a darker shadow, you do want to work a little bit slower with this, with baby steps. But now I am taking my P. Louise base once again and I'm going to use this to cut out my cut crease. I'm going to place the base at the inner third of my eyes and then I'm just going to do a very rough map of how I want the cut crease shape to look like. Then I'll take a very thin paintbrush to really carve out the crease and drag it up past my natural fold of my crease because when you look up you still want to see the cut crease showing and you also don't want any transfer. So you want to bring this up higher than your natural fold. And once the cut crease is in place, I'm going to take the highlighting shade in the palette and place that right on top. It's going to turn into like a light sky blue metallic, which is beautiful just because the P. Louise base did pull a little bit more light blue because of the shadows underneath. So it works out fine. It looks like you have a different shadow when it's technically a different shadow, if that makes sense. I did use a shadow wet to get the most metallic shine. But now I'm just taking my ColourPop BFF liquid liner in the shade Crazy and I'm going to use this to give myself a wing. This is a dark navy eyeliner and I just think it's a subtle way of, you know, doing something a little bit different. I could have went with black but this dark navy really pulls in the monochromaticness of the blue eyeshadows but it also defines the lash line because it is super dark. Going back to that dark navy blue shade, I'm going to press this up against my bottom waterline but only at the outer third and I'm going to try my best to connect the shadows at the outer corner where the wing is. But then I will take a bit of this green shadow and I'm going to place that at the inner third of my lower lash. And where the green and blue meet, I am just squishing them two together so that way it can blend into each other and there are no harsh lines and it's just like a smooth gradient. But then I will take the light yellow shade and place that at the inner corners of my eyes. I do take the highlighting shade once again and I'm going to place that at my inner corners. Whatever shadow you put this on top of, it's going to transform that shade. So my inner corners look like a yellow lime metallic shadow, which is really pretty. And this, you guys, is the final look completed. Definitely the most colorful and probably the hardest technique out of the three, but I love how this turned out. It's something so different for me. Like, I don't think I've done this color combination before. So I hope you guys enjoyed this final look. So that you guys was my three looks. Be sure to let me know which look out of the three was your favorite. I know all three of them was so different from each other and I'm really happy how they turned out. I think out of all the three looks, one palette videos I have done, I think with this palette I was truly able to create three looks that looked completely different from each other. They all had different vibes. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the three looks. Let me know which look was your favorite down below. If you guys did enjoy this video and found it helpful and you want to see more BH Cosmetics on my channel, then give the video a thumbs up. I would appreciate it so much if you guys did. But with that being said, that is going to complete today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!